Well, praise the Lord. What a wonderful day. The day the Lord hath made. You know, I don't know if it was just something special in the air, but uh, I noticed it just looked more summery and fresh and something. You know, of course, we, we live up on a hillside uh, and uh, have a bit of property there. And I don't know how many oak trees. We probably have 25, 30 oak trees and uh, a lot of birds. And uh, yesterday, uh, we were sitting there, and we had a hawk, of all things, come and land. You know, I, I never will stop being excited and filled with joy when we see special things from God's handiwork. Can you say amen? amen. And sometimes I stop, and then I say, you know, to somebody, my father made that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Well, dear ones, we're going to rejoice together, and let's open our hearts. Father, we come now to just say thank you for all of your mercy, all your goodness, all your blessings. And, Lord, we thank you that we can be here gathered worshiping you today. And I thank you for all that are here in the auditorium and uh, all that might be watching from some other place. And so we just put these things in your hands and we're opening our hearts and welcoming you, Lord, Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. yes, yes, amen. Well, Pastor Toby Hall, come on, Pastor Toby. We're going to start with a great question in this song. It's not only a question, it's also a reminder. Love this song. Are you washed in the blood? in us. It's his salvation working in us.
light of mine. Yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. I can see a lot of light out there. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Down in my heart, deep down in my heart, I'm gonna, gonna let, let it shine. Deep down, down in my heart, I'm gonna let it shine. shine. Deep down in my heart, oh, I'm, I'm gonna let, let it shine. shine. Let it Him, please keep that light shining in us so we can let it shine into, into those around us, Lord. Mm, he's our power supply, isn't he? I was thinking, you know, he came down from heaven to draw us close to him. That was quite, quite a, a long way. He's gone. he's gone way out of his way to reach down here to us, <laughs> to draw us close to him. And he's doing that, isn't he? Right here and now. You came down from the head to draw close to you. You left your throne on the floor to my rescue. I never ceased just to marvel at the lengths that you went to when you came down. Oh 
of all powers, of all kings, of all nature and all created things, of all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before. Of all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. For the lengths you went to, you took the fall and thought of us above all, Lord. And you are above all. You are above all, Lord. You are sovereign. You are king. You are Lord. And we are yours. Thank you for all you choose to bestow upon us out of the generosity of your mercy and grace, Lord. Thank you for the ongoing flow of your love, Lord into our hearts and minds and souls and spirits and bodies and the hope we have that knows no end, our hope in you. We rejoice in you now, Lord. In Jesus' name, we rejoice in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Toby. That that was wonderful. And uh, the thing I love about your leading is you have an anointing that rests on you, and uh, it comes out in the song. So it's not just a matter of chords and notes and you know singing only. It's got a, a extra dimension. See from the Spirit of God. Do you feel that, dear ones? Yes, amen. Praise God. That's all the difference in the world. It's all the difference in the world. Praise God. Amen and amen. Well, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We have many needs that we're continuing to pray for. And I'm so happy for, you know, the thing is, a, a prayer here at Church of the Valley, is a, it's turned on all the time. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. And uh, once a prayer request goes out and gets on the line, uh, then my phone starts beep, <laughs> beep, beep. You know, all those that are joining in uh, to support the prayer and Pastor Ron, would you uh, come and help us and share a, a few things that we need to be aware of? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
We need to pray for David Price. He's going through radiation therapy right now, and he's feeling sick. I know I got word from Karen. Uh, we need to keep Gloria in prayer, that God just finished the work in her, and uh, we hold her up, and that uh, God does a complete healing in her life. Amen. Amen. And we pray for Dale, that God touch her while she's going through this M MS. And I pray for Christy, which is Larry and Terry's Friend. Dorset's daughter-in-law's sister. She's pregnant, and she has COVID right now. Mm -hmm. So we need to hold her up. I got a prayer, praise report from Richard. Mary is eating. <laughs> Yay. Thank so you, So that's Jesus. a praise report. Hallelujah. But we still need to pray for her, that God yes. just raises her up. We need to pray for Esther, that God raises her up yes. completely, speedy recovery. And Nancy, we need to keep her in prayer, that God just continue to heal her after her accident. And so let's just go to God in prayer. Yeah. Well, Lord, I just thank you for today, Lord, and you still are on the throne. You do answer our prayers. You are a God that heals. And I pray for David Price right now, Lord, that you just touch him right now as he goes through this therapy, Lord, that there be no side effects, that the cancer is completely gone, name. Lord, that he comes name. out completely healed from this, Lord. In Jesus and I just name. ask that you just touch him right now. He's a man of faith, and I ask that you just raise him up, Lord, right now, Lord. And I pray for Dale, Lord, that you just be with her, just wrap your arms around her and heal her, Lord. And just touch her and just give her a peaceful day today, Lord. And Lord, I hold glory up to you, Lord. And I just claim that no bad report or anything, Lord, that, that you just Jesus name. heal Jesus her name. completely yes, Jesus. from the Jesus. top of her head to the soles of her feet. That you just Thank completely you, Thank you, uh, get rid of this cancer, Lord. And just Thank I just you, claim healing in her life and her body God, right now. Take it all. Jesus and Lord, I thank you for the good report about Mary, and I just can ask that you just continually raise her up and make her stronger, because I know that God. she wants to be here, Lord. And I ask that you just give her the strength to be able to show Jesus, up, Lord, and just continually to work in her. And I pray for Esther, Lord, that you just do a speedy recovery with her, Lord, that you just touch her and raise her up, Lord, after her fall and the breaks that she has, that they just heal completely and there be no residual damage, Lord. And I hold Christy up to you, Lord, that the baby be safe and her through this COVID, yes, God, that she's completely her. healed, Lord. And if she doesn't know you, that this draws her into Jesus. you, Lord, that she sees your hand and she knows that you're right there with her, Lord. Touch her, and just touch her right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for Nancy, Lord. I ask now that you just touch her and just raise her up, Lord, and let nothing be wrong you, with her Jesus. as you just speedy recovery after her bike accident, Lord. And I ask that you just touch her right now where she's at. And I hold our pastor up to you, Lord, that same with him, that you just continue to do a healing in his life and just raise him up, Lord. And Lord, any prayer requests that I forgot, any that I don't know, you know our hearts, you know our where we're at, you know whether we need a physical, financial, mental healing, Lord. And I just know that you're still on the throne and you're the God that heals. And I claim victory in all these lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, um, I really believe that there's power in the prayer of agreement. Amen. When we agree, the scriptures teaches that it, it amplifies. Yeah. If there's a few... It's one response. If it's more, then it's a greater response. It's what the scripture teaches us. And so it's very important that we agree together uh, here and hold up these needs. Praise the Lord. Um, we have a few things that we want to share with you. And uh, one is uh, we've been looking forward to the return of Brother Chuck Gerard, and uh, you know we are extremely blessed, Church, to be able to get him uh, as often as we get him, and especially now. Uh, I don't know if you know what's going on with him, but you know that movie came out about the revival. Jesus Revolution. It's called what? 
Jesus Revolution. Yeah, the Jesus Revolution. And, and guess what? The Brother Chuck was right the in the middle of all of that. And it was his songs that he was writing and his band, Love Song, that was one of the main things that was promoting that season. And uh, Roxanne and I were kind of caught up in it because it went nationwide, really. And uh, we seen the same thing going on down Louisiana. <laughs> the revival was breaking out on the campuses. And uh, I could tell you a lot more, but we were a part of all of that, too. And uh, so I'm real excited for what's going on because now that the movie's out, uh, they're, they're going to see him again because yeah. it had been so many years since he was out traveling that a lot of people just didn't know who he was. But now they've seen him in that movie and the idea in some of the books being written and uh, they're, they're getting interested and they're saying, hey, we want to hear this. Come on, minister to our church. So uh, he's getting a lot more uh, in invitations and it's, it's really beautiful. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm so glad I'm looking at another answer to prayer <laughs> sitting right here before me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Pastor Roberts and Lady <laughs> Crystal. And uh, they finally got the move. Yay. Woo. Woo Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And uh, they're, they're in our, our, uh, within, the, you know, close proximity now. And uh, I, I'm excited about that. And I, I know that's going to be a blessing in many ways for you as well as us. And uh, one of the things was I was glad to see that once in a while they could pop into service now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we got to talk about finding things too. We, we want to put you to work a little bit now and then. <laughs> amen. 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 And uh, I think it's getting close to time to uh, hear more from Pastor Roberts. You, Word, you got a word boiling inside you probably. We'll, we'll talk to you about it. Hallelujah. So anyway, but there's one more thing. We've been praying for the revival out on the streets, San Francisco and uh, Oakland and, um, you know, over Berkeley and those areas. And Brother uh, uh, Larry... Up Rosenbaum, that's what I'm trying to think of, you know, held it up and they they did this big march. He's good at organizing. And they had a peop bunch of people come together over in San Francisco. And Brother Scott just happened to get in on that. <laughs> come up here, would you? Come on and, uh, uh, and let's uh, have you share a word what happened? Uh, about what happened uh, over there. Well, praise the Lord. It's been a, a busy week. <laughs> I went down to Southern California and participated in Mario Morello's uh, outreach down there. He had a 5,000 person right. tent at, at the uh, LA fairgrounds down there for four nights. And uh, I was there for three of those. And uh, the last night, I think as many people got saved, I mean, every night there were hundreds that came forward and also a hundred or so that were healed of various things. And uh, so, and the last night was just went on and on and on and uh, foreshadowed the whole previous three nights. That was on the L.A. fairgrounds, you know. Mario's a street preacher, too. He just got yeah. a tent to do yeah. it in. Yeah. See, we don't get to do a tent. But then I came back home, and we had our SOS outreach on Friday. And then Saturday, um, Paul Coca and Larry had organized this march, which we do every year now. And they start at the fair building the uh, uh, the main building uh, at the fisherman's wharf number one 
and uh, the ferry building, they called it, and then uh, marched at several miles from there up to Fisherman's Wharf, and group met there and marched and came up. I was got there a little bit late, and I missed the beginning location, but I set up with my cross and everything, and Chuck was there and, and other excellent musicians. Uh, there was a woman there that sang first time on the streets, and she was amazing you know, with, her, with her music. And uh, so anyway, they had, we had the march, and um, then we extended our outreach. Normally, we go from 1 to 4, and it went to 530 mm -hmm. because uh, Paul said, hey, we can't stop. And Larry agreed and uh, went on for 530. So it was a great weekend as a great awesome. week the Lord was lifted up awesome. all over the state thousands and thousands of people wow. uh, received and heard the gospel it was a busy day at Fisherman's Wharf numerous of us preached uh, short 15 20 minute messages so anyway pray for the reaping of all of that you know I've, I tell Mario when I see him and I saw him, uh, uh, that he's on the reaping end. I'm, I'm on mostly the sowing and the watering end where we're preaching the gospel to people and you don't get to give altar calls on the street. You know, we see people saved continually. But Mario, he's on the reaping end. So some sow, some water, some reap. God gives the increase, the Bible says. So that's what we participated in all week and will continue. And we've got uh, another outreach that's a favorite of mine. I, I do some extra stuff on Fleet Week when the, when the Navy fleet comes in and the Blue Angels fly for four days and so on and so forth. That's coming up in October. So lift all of these things up and, and uh, let's seal those who were saved, hundreds and hundreds were saved, uh, you, especially at Mario's meetings down there, and hundreds and hundreds were healed. It was just glorious to, to watch. It encourages me to go to the reaping meetings <laughs> uh, because, like I say, I'm mostly sowing and watering, and uh, I get to see the reaping uh, from that, and uh, we participate in it all. So. Awesome. God bless you and, and the church here and the support that you do for me and for Larry and, and Paul and others. And we appreciate it greatly and can't fully do what we do uh, without you. <laughs> you have a part in this. So God bless. Thank you, Jesus. Get over here a little more. Call out to Jesus, and you will be saved. <laughs> Can you imagine? This guy carries these kind of signs around all over. Right. And I've been with him in a restaurant, and, and we've had people stop by the table. Yeah. Boy, I thank God for that sign you've got on your shirt. <laughs> I believe that. And, uh, you know, that's what it is to witness See, that's what witnessing is all about. Somehow, some way, get the word out and um, praise the Lord for that. Thank you so much uh, for filling us in on that, Scott. Uh, Scott is one of those. He's just, he's got it in his bones. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're wonderful. It's wonderful. And we're so glad that you're a part of our church family as well. Praise God. Um, all right. Um, I think it's about time for us to make a change here and take an offering. And um, so, you know, it's about, it's about one of the most spiritual <laughs> things that you can do. Because the truth of the matter is I was just listening on the television this morning uh, to a pastor preaching, and, and he said, you cannot love without giving. That rang a bell. Yeah. You can't 
love and not give. Giving is a part of the whole thing. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. So more than just for your birthday, we give to you. Uh, you give back yeah. our Christmas or whatever. But that's prompted by love, isn't it, dear ones? Yeah. So Roxanne, play something for us and uh, come bring your offerings like we've been doing. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Let's uh, ask the Lord to bless these gifts. Father in heaven, we uh, love to bring our gifts before you. It's part of what we're supposed to do to build the kingdom, and building the kingdom is most uh, big in our minds, and we want to keep moving forward, doing what we can to expand. You said expand the kingdom that the kingdom was expanding. And you said the violent taketh by force. And uh, that means we even put our money into it. So we're going to do everything we can to be a part of it. Thank you, Jesus. And so we thank you. And I pray you'll bless each and every one today for their involvement. And uh, we know, Lord, that you've got great things in store. So shower your blessings back, Lord, as you said in your word you would do. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I was watching a little bit of a golf uh, match yesterday, and the young man that's leading at it right now, he's from India. He's got an Indian uh, name, uh, Thigalo. Thigala, uh, Thigala, and uh, he is really something else, the way he can play now, and uh, I noticed that they said he went to Pepperdine University, and he played on Pepperdine College's uh, golf tour group, and that's where he learned how to play. Now, how many of you know that Pepperdine is a Christian University. I'll tell you what, you may not know this. They have seven campuses all over the world. Seven. And uh, their Pepperdine is right there in Malibu, see, up on the hill. And you can see the city of Malibu and the, and the be beautiful water and everything. But uh, way back when, and I think 1939 or something like that, uh, the founder was a Christian preacher man. And started the school because, you know, Christians have been all involved for ever since this country became a country, you know, behind education. And uh, so then I, I began to see the expanding thing. And I thought, that is pretty good. This great golfer, one of the lead golfers now, was a part of a, a, a Christian heritage. And a lot of people... Uh, don't know, but there's a lot of people from India that are outstanding Christians. We've supported some, uh, like uh, Brother John George and uh, people that we know. And uh, so uh, I thought I would just uh, share a little bit of that as an inspiration. You know, people don't realize, but God is moving. I mean, he's, he's finding ways to do things and doors of opportunity. And we're living in a, a, a day where God is raising uh, the spirit uh, to do more and more. Praise God. Well, with that in mind, uh, Roxanne has got some thoughts on her heart that she wants to share with us today. And she's been getting ready and preparing and 
I know you love hearing from Roxanne. Uh, so come on, uh, Roxanne, we, we want to hear from you, hon. Come on. You want to come up here for... Well, <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I don't do this that often, so I, you know, I'm, I get nervous. And then we have Pastor Robertson, our precious crystal, and I was like, ah, <laughs> Ex <laughs> experts are here. <laughs> anyway, but God is good. So... You know, we um, are grafted, and the Bible says we, as if you're a Gentile, like I'm a Gentile, you are grafted into the vine. Yes. And all my life, I really didn't know anything about the vine, <laughs> you know. But the vine is really was founded like in the Old Testament. I mean, it's the Israelites where God moved through their lives, and we see miracle after miracle after miracle. We see human um, humanness and frailty in them and so we can relate and so anyway we're gonna so when I've started looking at this now I usually get to share on these seasons and we're entering a brand new season it's a new year Rosh Hashanah that means head of the year in Hebrew and it's a new season so I'm just gonna so just pray with me that I can that the Lord will speak. <laughs> Pray with me that the Lord will speak. So, Father, we ask you to speak this morning, Lord, that you would share what's on your heart. And even if I muff up the words or whatever, God, that your Holy Spirit will speak and that you will do what you want to do in us, God. Prepare us for the days ahead. And, Lord, we thank you for your blessings in our life. We thank you for protecting us and covering us and meeting needs, God, what we think we're not going to make. And, Lord, you are faithful, faithful, faithful. We give you all the praise. Amen. Okay, so New Year, New Season. So we can go to um, – I have a couple of things. I want to hold on to this one. I have a pamphlet thing that kind of goes over this particular season. In the Bible, it's called Yom Teruah, which means day of blowing or day of trumpets, day of shouting. It's like a big noisy day, yes. trumpets and shouting, big noisy day. And we can go to the next slide, I think. This um, – actually began this year i'm gonna i need to yeah you could pass them out but if you pass them out don't read them word for word i'm not following this exactly <laughs> but it's like some information that i didn't put in this teaching and it's some of it's in some of it i probably will hit but anyway so this actually began this year um on the 15th which is friday night last friday night it starts at evening when you read the Bible in Hebrew, it says, and God, let's see, it says, um, you know, there was darkness that covered the land. And it says, so it was, uh, and God created a day. He said, let there be light. But it says there was evening and there was morning. And that was the first day. In our English Bibles, it doesn't always put it evening and morning. Some, uh, some old ones, some old translations do. But so... The Jewish people still honor the day starting in the evening. And so this started on Friday evening, the 15th. It is a two-day holiday, and it actually is through today. So that's why we're talking about it. So it will be over today at sundown. So, And actually, if you're in Israel, this is like detail, and I get too detailed. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I like the big picture, but I also like some of the details. But if you're in Israel, even when the sun goes down, they won't eat or start a new day if they're fasting until three stars. Because that's like, you know, one, you could be like seeing things, right? Two, you might be seeing things. But if you see three stars, you know it's night. So you know that, you know, a new day has started. So you can, you can start eating. So anyway, that's just extra. <laughs> okay, so this is called Rosh Hashanah. 
In the Bible, it speaks of it in Leviticus as um, Feast of Trumpets. And this holiday um, starts, it's based on the lunar year. So this, everything in the Bible, when they talk about months or something in so many months, yada, 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 they are not talking about January, February, March. They're not talking about the way we start it in January. But this begins a new year. So this is a new year, and it also is going to start a new season. Um, it's customary to say Happy New Year just in, in Hebrew, just like we say Happy New Year in January. And it's often, it's usually celebrated with apples and honey because everybody wants a sweet new year, right? So we actually have some apples and honey in there. <laughs> And I actually got these little tiny whole apples so that I didn't really have to, you know, with COVID and cleanliness, you know, I didn't have to cut them all up. So nobody had to touch them. So anyway, except to wash them, we washed them. Um, the Bible does not say this, but it is tradition. Everybody say tradition. Tradition. It is tradition <laughs> that um, the world was created at this time. But, you know, I don't know about that. It is considered the first day of the seventh month. That is in Leviticus 23, 23. <laughs> when it talks about um, the day of blowing or um, Rosh, well, they call it Rosh Hashanah, um, it starts and speak to Moses on the, um, what, whoops, I see um, something else here. I'm looking at the wrong one. And on the seventh month, on the first day, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, it's a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, and you shall offer offerings made by fire. So let's go to the next one. You guys have seen these. So I'm going to, I am not as good at blowing this as I used to be. I'm like, I don't know. You have to pray for me. I think I'm losing air or running out of air. This is like a, 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 gonna, it's a hazard. <laughs> I'm going to try to blow it. If you were in a Jewish synagogue starting on um, Friday night through today, they would blow the trumpet a hun probably around 100 times. So I mean at every few minutes or so, you're going to hear a trumpet. So let me see if I can do it. So, you know, can't have anything in my mouth. <laughs> going on, you know, all through the service. So in these feasts, I want you to see, we've kind of looked at these before. And the first ones are called a spring feast. And there is Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. We've talked about this before, how Jesus was a Passover lamb. He was unleavened bread in that he had no sin and that he was the first fruits of the resurrection. He was the first who ascended to the Father, um, you know, in a glorified, pure way. And those all happened within, a, within an eight-day period in real life. Like Jesus died and, you know, he rose on the third day, but all of that happened within eight days. Then, starting from the first day after, I think, I, I, did I write this down? Um, the first day after, I think it's uh, first fruits, 50 days you count off. It says count off 50 days. And then the Holy Spirit was given. Now Jesus was on the earth for 40 days, and people saw him and um, talked with him. And then he was telling his disciples, you go and wait in Jerusalem. And, they, and we're told, we're not told this like all in one paragraph. We're told it in pieces here and there through Acts. <laughs> But then we're told that um, they waited 10 days. They were in the upper room 10 days waiting on the Lord, and the Holy Spirit came. So that middle piece there starts what it's called the church age. You can see it under summer, uh, under summer gap. And there's Pentecost. So that happened in one fell swoop 50 days after the spring, uh, spring feast. Um, when Pentecost fell, this is interesting, it didn't happen in the upper room because everyone was Jewish. But later, different people went to, I think his name was Gaius or something like that. They went to different places. Uh, the Lord spoke to Paul and said, go visit so-and-so. And, but they were Gentiles. But they also received the Holy Spirit. So this started, these 
like when we've talked about these before, we've kind of looked at it day, a day, a day. And here I want to kind of bring together the spring and then the church age, what is called a church age, because this changed things. When these events begin to happen, it changes the spiritual thing that God is doing in the earth. He's doing something new. He's doing a different thing. And when Jesus came and was with us and died and was risen from the dead, then that was a new thing, <laughs> you know. They before had to have a lamb every single year for sacrifice. So when Pentecost came, it was a new thing, and Gentiles were like, that's where we probably come, like, we're, we're part of it. Because previous to that, we weren't part of it. And then it starts, it's been in that zone. We've been in this church age ever since. Now, there's, uh, I mean, this is where I get, you know, I, d I study a lot, but I haven't been what I'd call formally trained. And even when you're formally trained, there's so many viewpoints of what's going to happen going forward, right? But when I begin to see how Jesus fulfilled these things, and they are called the Feast of the Lord, right? That then you, you start to say, well, I mean, if you're going to follow the Feast of the Lord, and they were giving like 2,000 years before Jesus ever showed up, it's like then, you know, it's going to have to follow this succession. Exactly how, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to like tie it down that tight. But then... So there is a period after the church age, the next thing on, this, on the calendar to happen is this Feast of Trumpets, and that starts the fall feast. And that's where we are today. And these fall feasts all happen within a 15-day period. So they're going to be a little more spaced out than when Jesus came the first time. But when the second time happens, they're going to be close but not quite as close, not within a week. And trumpets, it is, um, so I want you to see these as spring season, the church age being, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, and the fall feast as being the things that God has laid out. But, you know, we kind of see through our glass darkly. <laughs> we don't see every single detail. But anyway, um, I get way ahead of myself. There are two passages that speak of the Lord God, I mean God Almighty, himself blowing a shofar. The first passage is in Exodus when the children prepared themselves to go to Mount Sinai to meet the Lord face to face. That's when the, the whole mountain was on fire. We've talked about this before. The mountain's on fire, thunder, lightning, and the people became afraid, and that's when they said to Moses, you go up there, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll wait back here. But it was a call to come into the presence of God. The second time is found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, and it says there, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a rousing cry, with a call from one of the ruling angels, and with, the, and with God's shofar, this may be a Hebrew translation, those who died united with the Messiah will be the first to rise, and, when, and, when, and we who are left still alive will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So he's going to come, and, I, you know, there's, there's different places in Revelations where it talks about a trumpet sound. And... I am not going to piece all that together, um, but it says at this point in Thessalonians that when the Lord himself is going to come down, I'm assuming that's probably going to be at what they call the last trump, but, you know, I'm not going to. So come down from heaven, and he's going to have God's shofar, and those who are dead are going to rise again, and the rest of us will be caught up in the air. Both times the shofar announces God's manifest presence. He was present at Mount Sinai with his people. And when he comes back, he's going to be present on the earth again. Okay? And so at the sounding of the shofar, 
the Yom Teruah, as it's spoken of in Leviticus, the blowing of the trumpet, the Feast of Trumpets, we remember that Jesus, the Messiah, is returning soon. Okay, let's go to the next one. I kind of have said this already, um, but we've talked about, um, you know, how Jesus, there's a verse, what I really want to get here is this verse, Luke 24, 27, beginning with Moses, when Jesus was with his disciples, it says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets. So Jesus sat with his disciples and started from like day one, Moses, right? And went through all the prophets. He explained to them what was written in all the scriptures about himself. So this is, so these scriptures, even the ones in Leviticus and elsewhere in the Old Testament, are scriptures about him and what he wants to do in us and what he wants to do in the earth. And we, um, I mean, Holy Spirit, like I said, you know, the first three were fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled them. Holy Spirit was uh, poured out on Pentecost. We call that in English. It's Shavuot, which is seven sevens, which is like starting the day after, um, you know, he rose and all of that. Then it's like seven sevens, 50 days later. Then the church age became... The last three, I don't know exactly when he's going to do it, but he's going to do it, and he will fulfill it at his second coming. So anyway, there's that. Let's go to the next one. So I wanted to kind of bridge these things. So next Sunday, when Chuck Gerard is here, is called uh, Yom Kippur, and that is the Day of Atonement, okay? Okay. So where we are started last Friday, and where we're going to end next Sunday are 10 days, and it's called the High Holy Days. These are the most holy days um, in the whole Jewish faith, and they're called the 10 Days of Awe, awe. the High Holy Days. Um, it's a time to draw near to the Lord, to be in His, re in his presence. And so every year, if we were, if we were, um, if we didn't have Jesus and we were still following the law, then every year at this point, when we look to next Sunday and this day is Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, that's the day our sins got forgiven, okay? That's the day that the high priest sacrificed a lamb. And that's the day that he offered up, um, you know, incense on the offering, on, on the altar, and he only could go in before the Holy of Holies. Only he could go in. And so they take this 10 days, particularly these 10 days, as a day or a time or season of repentance, a time to look inside themselves, look at the past year and think about what I could have done better and things like that. And so it's a time to wait patiently for the Lord. We need to also, I mean, we can repent all the time now, but it's a, it's a time to separate yourself from sin. They have a, um, I don't know, I'll call it a service, where they call taklish. And so there's this gentleman over here, and he's standing over a little bit of a water. So if you, ha if you go to like a river or a sea, and so this is what is done today, probably last Friday night. There would be these kind of services going on with Jewish, con uh, in, you know, Jewish congregations. I've actually been to one or two of these. And um, you have a little piece of bread, and usually you've given some thought to what you did wrong or what you would have liked to have done better, and you cast it away from yourself onto this water. I've been in services, even when I was really young, and you probably have, I think we've had some here, where we wrote down things on a piece of paper, and we threw them in like a bonfire or something like that, you know, like at youth camp or something, to say, God, I want you to take this away from me. You know, I want to do better. I want you to speak. Well, he's spoken to you if you have any conviction on anything that you think, you know, that you've done wrong. He's spoken to you already, but we want him, we want to be close enough that we can hear him. You know, if we're like 
so far off. I mean, there's verse. There's a verse in 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 the original Hebrew. I used to have more time, and I was studying it more. But it says to he's talking to his children, and he says, "If you walk casually with me, I will walk casually with you." He's asking this people to draw close to him. He's always wanted us, even when they were at Mount Sinai. He wanted those people to come, you know, to, to be with him. So another thing that's done at this time in, uh, on, on these 10 days is uh, Psalm 27 is read morning and night, <laughs> along with other prayers. And it starts out, the Lord is my, is, the light and, is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? There's so many verses in this chapter that would be familiar to you when you read them. It says, the Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? And then it ends with, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently. So what I had in my mind is if we think about the return of Jesus, I mean, I know you guys have all heard ser sermons on, you know, the Lord's coming. You know, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and disrespectful, fa you know, children and this and that. I mean, it, a lot of it doesn't sound, you know, <laughs> that, that exciting to, to think about trying to live through. But what I thought was so interesting when I looked at this is that this whole chapter is an encouraging, instructional chapter about God helping you, defeating all your foes, giving you strength, reassurance, and even more. And it's a perfect guide for difficult times. And I don't know, uh, you know, how he's going to wrap things up, but I guess I think this. For those people who go through some degree of this, I don't know if it will be the tribulation or not, but for people, even today, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's just me. But it's like there is so much stuff, you know. I mean, as a child, I don't remember every few days hearing some devastating news, you know. <laughs> I don't remember seeing some person, you know. It, it just seems like today there's so much stuff. But this chapter, I'm thinking if God is having his people read this chapter twice a day, you know, when these things happen, you know, probably, I'm thinking, the, the Lord says there's a veil over the eyes of uh, the Jews, you know, for a season until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. So it's like when he starts lifting this veil, they're going to, you know, it's like start putting two and two together. He's the Messiah, you know. And so, um, and then it, there's a verse that says, I probably Pastor Ron knows in Romans or somewhere because <laughs> he's been teaching on it, but there's a verse that it says that if it's been beneficial for you as a Gentile to believe in the Lord, how much more when they have a full understanding? Am I saying, I mean, I'm saying the, the essence of it. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this season, with all these trumpets blowing, is a big wake up, wake up. It is a call. And it is a forceful, loud shouting call to believers to wake up, repent, get yourself straightened, and yeah. get yourself ready. Now, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, it's, it's talked about a lot in Leviticus 23. And let me just take a quick look here. So, Yom Kippur is really, because it's the Day of Atonement, it is the day the high priest would go in there and either the offering of the blood of the lamb was accepted or it wasn't. I mean, they, I, mean I, don't, I wasn't there <laughs> 2,000 years ago. But what I've heard is that they put a chain around the high priest's ankle. I mean, if you didn't go in clean, you could be dead. And that was a way to get him out of there. And so this is like more than serious business. <laughs> this is like, Absolutely. you know, serious business, serious, serious business. But this would have been, again, the culmination of repenting and waiting on God. This is considered the Sabbath of Sabbaths. 
it is the most holy day in the entire Jewish calendar. It represents atonement of repentance and forgiveness. So, again, I said once a year, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, sprinkle the blood of a bull offered and a goat as an atonement for the people, offer incense on the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. It was sacred. Only he could go. The book of Hebrews, chapters 9 and 10, tells us that the blood of bulls and goats offered up to the Lord in the ancient temple. So now we're in the New Testament, and we're looking at, um, where, do, where do I have it here? Is it Hebrews? Yeah, 9 and 10. Hebrews 9 and 10. I actually have it over here. Hebrews 9 and 10. So they're saying that what was done with the Israelites in the ancient temple, that temple's been destroyed. It was destroyed, it was built, destroyed, built again, destroyed. And there's supposed to be a third one, but anyway. So it hasn't been done since. It was destroyed, okay? They have not been going into a temple. No high priest has been walking in with the blood of a bull in, since like 70 A.D. So in 70 A.D., once it was destroyed, this hasn't been happening, okay? And so, anyway, um, the Bible says in Hebrew that this was a foreshadow of the blood of Jesus. He is our perfect atonement. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And when Jesus died on the cross, we read that the veil into the Holy of Holies was torn from the, and this was like way up there. I mean, it, I forget how many cubits, but it's, way high it was torn from the top so nobody got down at the bottom and started pulling this happened from the top when he died the earth shook there was lightning there was thunder and the veil was torn from the top to the bottom so access to the holy of holies was given to other people he was given access through the blood of Jesus. We have access. We don't have to go once a year and all of that. So there is a still, and I kind of mentioned it already, a prophetic aspect to the fe this feast yet to be fulfilled, and that is turning of Jewish people to Messiah. Zechariah 12.10, it says, When he lifts... When he returns, he will lift the veil from their eyes. The New Testament foretells the same event, Romans 11:26, which says, at Messiah's return, all Israel will be saved. You know, I don't know what that exactly means, other than this is just what the Bible says. All Israel will be saved. And so during this feast, just like during the one we're happening right now today, where Psalms 27 is read and where people are repenting and looking at casting off from themselves the things they can think of or the things the Holy Spirit speaks to them. There is a story that's read, and I want it, I've never done this before. Let's go to the next one. And it's the story of Jonah. <laughs> and so I, I looked at this. I started looking at this. And so anyway, and this... How much time? Because this was, this was longer. I wanted to look at the big pictures of the spring feast and the fall feast and how they kind of relate. But then you have to also look at how does this apply. And I'm going to talk about Jonah for a little bit to see how, how we can think of things to basically ask for forgiveness <laughs> over because Jonah did a lot of stuff wrong. So how does a prophet get in a well? <laughs> You do what Jonah did. <laughs> do we end up there too sometimes? And I just put this at one month, atonement. I've heard this before. You know, the, after you, the atonement, it's like then we are at one. We're at one with God. We're at peace with God. Yeah. We are with him. So Jonah, on Yom Kippur, um, they read these verses in a synagogue. Is there a complete understanding? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to look at them too. There's 48 verses. There's like three or four books to the book of Jonah, but there's only 48 verses. Jonah is different from among the prophetic books. 
which share the words of God. Typically, when you look at a prophet's book, it's talking about this is what God says, and that prophet is telling some people or a nation or a king or something like that. But Jonah's not like that. Jonah focuses on how he resents God for loving his enemies. <laughs> There's nothing in the book of Jonah that says, God told me this, and, you know. And so we're going to look at that for a minute. So are we okay that God loves our enemies? Sometimes we are. Sometimes we think, Ugh. God spoke to Jonah to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, and they were arch enemies of the Israelites. I mean, serious. They would kill people, stack them up at the gates. They were brutal. They were horrible people. And God says, go there. <laughs> Jonah didn't want to go there. <laughs> so the Bible tells us that he fled. Get this. He fled from the presence of God. He went the other way. He fled from the presence of God. And today, we may not physically hide from God, although we maybe might, but we often try to spiritually suppress the Spirit's leading. Amen. I've been in situations, I don't know about you, but God may nudge you to share about the love of Jesus with someone, and we may think, God, is that you? <laughs> Could you just maybe say it again? And you're having the same conversation like, you know, 25 times, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or you say, depending on the person, this cannot be you, God. <laughs> this is not the person that I'm supposed to talk to. Maybe they hurt you. Maybe they've talked or said something or you've heard they did. Maybe they never really even said it. Maybe you just heard they said it. Maybe you know things about them and you think, they, we need an expert. <laughs> We need to have Scott or Paul Coca go talk to them. <laughs> I've met people like that where I think we need people who are used to witnessing to maybe Pastor Ron. He could do it. <laughs> so anyway, Jonah ends up going the wrong, the other way. He went to the sea. I'm going to make this. I'm going to try to. And a forceful wind came up. Um, the sailors on the boat with him were afraid, and they started crying out to the pagan gods. They were all pagan. But where is Jonah? He's asleep. He doesn't have any fear of the Lord. He's just doing his thing. He's sleeping in the bottom of the boat. In verse 6, it says, The chief sailor tells Jonah he should get up and call on God to rescue them. And, I mean, this is another question. Have we ever been confronted to pray when we were in an unspiritual frame of mind? I have. Or sometimes you get a call and somebody needs something and you've got like 5,000 things happening around you right then. It's like the timing sometimes <laughs> when God asks you to do something or stop and pray or do, or, you know, this kind of thing. To, to, to be standing in the gap, to be the priest that he's called you to be is not always convenient in our brain. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't convenient to, to Jonah. And so when Jonah reveals, so he tells them he's a Hebrew, and then he believes, he fears God. He actually calls him the God of the land and the sea. And a lot of pagan gods, they were like gods over certain elements of nature, the land or the sea or the birds or, you know what I'm saying? It was, if you were the God of the land and the sea, then you were a very big God over everything. Yeah. So he tells them he's the God over the land and the sea. And then they really start to fear because they think, uh-oh, he serves a very big God. <laughs> and um, they were more afraid. So they knew he was running from God. And they're like, what do we do? What do we do? He gets down to Jonah, finally says, throw me overboard and so and so so. Jonah finally prays a prayer, but it is a prayer of distress. Okay? There's no mention of him ever saying, I'm sorry I ran from you. I'm sorry I didn't listen. Just sorry. He wasn't repentant. 
he was just sorry, and he was sorry for where he was. Because shortly after he got thrown into the sea, a fish came and got him, and he ended up in the fish, okay? And so he is in distress at where he is, but he's, we don't read that he repented of any of his actions. There were no enemies for Jonah in this story, at, other than him thinking that Nineveh was God's enemy. Even in Nineveh, when he got there, no one attacked him, no one refused to listen to him, no one mocked him. This might be like if you think about going on the streets, and you know, I know that, um, that Scott and Paul and those guys, they've had things thrown at them. They have people ins you know, yelling insults and this and that at times. They didn't get that at Nineveh. He got none of that. All it, the Bible, <laughs> this isn't funny, but the Bible says all of the people of Nineveh repented. The pagans of Nineveh fasted. They wore sackcloth and they prayed to God. And so from the, it says from the most powerful to the very least, even the king sat in sackcloth, which is, you know, like sitting in the dirt, being humbled. Where there is true repentance, there's action. Amen. Lip service to God is, without action, is not really repentance. So important. As believers, God wants to, he wants us to come to him and obey him, whether we totally understand it or not. Amen. We are his servants. We are at his calling. We are representatives of him. He will open the door. Sometimes, usually, when he calls you to do something, you think, I cannot do that. I think that all the time. I cannot do that. But he always makes a way. He always provides. And he always does what only he can do. We also, if we love the Lord, we want to take our action and bring our hearts close to him so that we can hear him and he can search his hearts. Are we perfect? Am I perfect? Not close. I'm not perfect. We make mistakes. Sometimes they're big mistakes. Um, but we want to turn around. We want to we want to repent. And then we want to turn and change, right? We want to change. And we want to take action to do differently. So God ends up forgiving Nineveh, and he actually ends up forgiving Jonah. He's still a prophet of the Lord. The Lord is ready to forgive and set things right. God keeps forgiving. Even after God done all this, done all this stuff for him, Jonah's pouting. Actually, he, he ran off, and a tree grew up, and then the sun got so hot, and the tree withered, and he's still pouting. He doesn't see what God has done. <laughs> I think I'm like that. We don't always see what God is doing, you know? It's like, I did all this work, and I did da-da-da, whatever, and... You know, I don't see that much. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you the truth. You know, you say, God, help, you know. And so, but the thing of it is, is God still forgave him. He saved 120,000 people. <laughs> the arch enemy of Israel, right? And so, um, God is ready to deliver, to help, and to forgive. He forgave the sinners. On the boat, he forgave them because they called on God, and he forgave Nineveh. And so Feast of Trumpets is the beginning of a season and a call of repentance, and Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, is the culmination of God's mercy and grace shown, really, through the atoning blood of Jesus. And so that is connecting the two. I actually had... A song. I don't know if I can pull that together or not, but it's called "In the Presence of Jehovah." We used to sing it all the time, and Pastor Ron is going to help me find it. After this, there's one more slide actually, and it just says "Blessings for a Sweet New Year," and it shows apples and honeys. And this is from Psalms 129. I mean, 119, 103. I need my glasses. How sweet are your words to my taste? Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. What the Lord does in us 
always brings forth good fruit. Even if we don't see the outset, it's always sweet. It's always peaceable. You can always follow the peace that you have that the Lord, Holy Spirit gives you when God is talking to you. If he gives you a peace on the inside, you can walk through anything. And you, but you have to be listening and close, and we have to give to him the things that we're stressing over. <laughs> we have to give this stuff to him. All this stuff that Jonah was stressing over, he's like a great example. He was stressing. And he wasn't really following God totally. I mean, he wasn't looking to see what God was wanting to do through him. But he, um, but God still, if we, he's, he, it's like if you turn these things to him, then he will bring about peace and he will bring about things that we can't bring about. I want to say a really quick prayer. Um, when you guys, if anybody, I'm just going to say this. If anybody wants prayer or you feel like you should pray for somebody else, I'm just going to say feel free. And, um, but this is a really cool song. It was written by a guy we knew. Um, Terry McAlpine, I think. But um, is it going to play? And those little boxes over in that corner will make it take the whole screen. Right here in his presence, I want to let you know, no matter how big your problem, troubles vanish, broken hearts are mended.
This is what these days Not are like about. A, this is what these days are about. Is it's the presence of the Lord. It's you taking time. He's close. He's close. So it's about us coming to him and saying, you know, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want to take away? What do you want to add? What do you want to bring me into? What do you want to change? You know, maybe it's where you want me to go, like Jonah, but maybe not. Maybe it's right. something else. But you just have to go, and you know what? It takes a little bit of time to wait on God. Amen. But we got 10 days. <laughs> and they waited 10 days, and Holy Spirit came. So we already have that. We're already blessed with that. But, you know, if somebody wants, wants prayer or something, I know. We can all pray and, you know, just agree together. But if not, if you just take time in these next few days, yeah. you know, extra time, just like they add um, Psalms 27, morning and night, something extra. Do something extra. Take an extra action for the Lord. Then he will pour out his spirit on you. He loves us so much. Anyway, God bless. In his holy presence. Come on, lift it up, dear ones. The weary. The weary find can perfect, find perfect, perfect rest. rest. The broken are restored. And the broken, you see, are restored in your presence. In your holy in presence. In your holy presence there's nothing oh there's nothing like the, the presence, presence of the Lord let's come on let's sing that course again in his presence it's the truth in his holy presence Oh, the weary can find perfect rest, and the broken are restored in His presence. Yes, Lord, in His holy presence. Hmm. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing, nothing, folks, like the presence of the Lord. There's a verse that says, In the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. You know, you can be sad, despondent, feeling troubled, not knowing even how to respond. But if you can just move into the presence and the best way i know to do it is through prayers of uh, praise songs of worship 
I tell you what, <laughs> you start into that, and guess what? I mean, things are going to change, and God's going to come and reveal himself to you. Thank you so much for this word this morning. I love it when Roxanne shares because she lays out some of these foundational truths, things that that all of our experience and and the work of God uh, is based upon these principles. And knowing them, uh, I, I know for myself, inspires me. Amen? It, it encourages me. And it, it helps me to get a, you know, I used to say it this way, get a handle. To get a handle on what we sort of feel it. It's kind of all around us. We hear thoughts about it, but we need to grab it, hallelujah, and get a hold of it for ourselves. Can you say amen? I'll tell you what, uh, if you get a hold of it, man, hallelujah, uh, it'll give you something to rejoice about. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you. This was a beautiful word, Roxanne, and thank you so much. And uh, let's just uh, pray right now that the Lord will take what we've heard today and help it come to pass within us. Father, we're asking you now to let this word that we're hearing mature. May it begin to take hold and, and we will begin to really grab it, hallelujah, and make it ours. And it will bring that inspiration and joy and, and life back into our spirit. And so we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Yes. I think that we should get everybody together and anoint Gloria and pray over Gloria. Yes. For a well, we'll need to be the mic. We're going to go back, both of you, that will go There's back to Gloria. We're going to lay hands on her. But uh, Brother Alex, you can let this be the conclusion and so we say farewell to those that are watching uh, by video, and uh, we're moving now into ministry. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.